and welcome back to another session with interactive Python with Francis. So um, on this session, we're actually going to look at the basics in Python, just like we started. So remember uh, at the initial start, we learned how to download PyCharm. So PyCharm is the best ID for Python development. So you can also download Visual Studio Code. It's also cool and nice ID. But on this course, we are actually going to use PyCharm. So you can go to um, IntelliJ, so you can go on to, so there's also an online platform called Native Py Native. So this is also an online ID that you can also use to write your Python code. So if you want to use it, it is nice and you can actually use to run your code and use for practice. If you, you, you are not, you don't want to download PyCharm, you can also use this platform. It's a very nice platform. So you can go to PyCharm, uh, um, JetBrains. JetBrains are actually the developers of PyCharm, so you can go to JetBrains to find about PyCharm if you want to download PyCharm and you can use it. Alright, so this is the app website and you can see that they have all their IDs listed over here so you can download PyCharm, right? Great. So now that you download PyCharm, now we can actually go and select create a new project so you can see that as soon as you install PyCharm, you should have created a new project over here. So you select that. If you already have an existing project, you can use that. So I've created a folder in on my desktop that is named as in learning and it's named as Python for AI. So that is what the folder I'm going to use. So I'm going to use here basics in Python. Basics in Python. That's the name of the file I'm going to use. And you also remember we mentioned if to be able to work with Python, you need to install the Python package, the Python um, um, software. So you can go onto Python. So this is a Python website. You can go onto the Python website and you can download the Python and package and install on your computer. So if you go to the downloads, you can see that this is the current version. I'm using Mac, so it shows me as download for Mac. If you're on Windows, it's really going to give you a Windows version. And you can see that it's also here, so you can select the one you want to download and you can select the current version and you can download it and install. So you need to install Python on your computer before you can start writing Python code. So it's very important to do that. When you install it, you're going to see that it will show you over here the Python SDK when you are going to write the code, All right? So now that I've, I've downloaded it already, now I can go and create my project. So you can see from down here, let me show you a bit. You can see here that create project. So now I can create a new project where I can start writing my Python code. So we're going to go through the, all the basics and uh, quickly as that so that we'll be able to move on to doing all the great stuff and building the cool project, cool stuff with Python as we mentioned earlier. So here we're going to create a file. So you can see that here, this is the file format for the project that I just created. If you click on this arrow, you can see that this are the files that are required for me to write run Python project you don't literally have to do anything with this so you can leave it like that but to create a new file you bring your arrow here and then you, you right click you you select on your mouse and you click here and create a file so you can see that this is a file I'm so I'm creating a, uh, a file so and this file is actually going to be a Python file so I select a Python file and I'm just going to be app.py. So that's the name of the file I created. And you see that the file shows over here. And that is where it's also open here that I'm going to use to work, work on. And you can see that that is how simple it is to set Python. So the first thing we're going to do is, is to talk about comment in Python. So in Python, whenever we, we, we talk about comment, let me, let me make this bigger and put in a presentation mode so that you can see it well. So go here to enter presentation mode so you can see that now it's bigger. 
All right, so we talk about comments in Python. We use the hash keyword to add comments. So as soon as I put the hash keyword, anything I put here, this is a comment. Everything I put here becomes a comment because of this hash keyword. So it helps us to actually implement comments. And you can see that if we show, we put the case that it actually gives us a little explanation of this. It's a block comment. A block comment should start with a hash. All right, so we're seeing that this block comment is what we have, and it starts with a hash. All right, so this is a simple way to implement comments in Python. So you're seeing that it's, it's very simple and very easy. Now, if you want to implement multiple comments in Python, so this is what we call single line comment. It's a single line comment. All right, so if you want to implement multiple line comment, so with that, we can actually um, implement the uh, double line comment by adding it here. So one way we can do is to, we can add uh, this quotation. You can see that it's not, it's not, well, just two, it is more than two quotations. And this is three in here. And then I can have, I can put my comment between these three quotations here and three quotations up. So now I can write here my multiple line comment. All right, so this is my multiple line comment that I created. This is my single line comment. So you can see the different ways of how to implement comments. You can use either single line or multiple line to create comments in Python. So that is um, an easier way to go with Python. So this is how easy it is to implement comment. So you can see that at every session, let's say if I should have here print line, I can just put a hash here to show that this is my function to create to print hello world all right now you can see that i've also created here also created here another function in front of the code so here i can just put in this quotation i can put a string here hello world So now, because this is a function that can help me print the hello world, a simple way of printing hello world or writing my first program in Python is I bring this function here, print, and inside I put in a string by putting this quotation means I'm talking about string. And then I put in here, hello world. Now if I should run this code, it's going to make reference to um, this command and it's going to print hello world for me. So this is how I write my first code in Python. And here I implemented, I introduced this comment and this comment did not affect the code because it comments doesn't affect any part of the code. It explains or gives um, a, a vivid um, explanation of what I'm writing. So every comment I have here will not affect. As soon as you should, should I take this um, here, you can see that as soon as I take those things out, it shows me as an error or something that needs to be resolved. Now it doesn't notice it as a comment. So, but as soon as I put these lines back, now it shows me that that's a comment. Similar to this, if I should take this out, now it doesn't know what to do with this because it doesn't show as a comment. But if I should bring it back, then it's going to now recognize it as a comment. So this is how we actually implement comment in Python. All right. So we looked at, now that we looked at comment, we can actually implement comment at different section of the code as we go forward. The next thing we're going to talk about is a variable. What are variables? So in, in Python, variables are used to create moments or used to assign, uh, it can be a phrase or a letter to a value. So we can say here, um, like we can use a letter as A equals five. 
So we the a here is the variable which we are using it to store this value of five. So we state a equals five because we want wherever we state a, it should remind us that it is equal to five. All right, so we can just come here and use a different print line. And inside this print, you're going to state a here. Now let me comment this one out so that it doesn't conflict with this one. So now this is going to print this five whenever I, I issue the command because this a here is representing this five. So now if I should print it, you see that it prints out five for me. So that is how to present a variable. You can also um, use phrase like maybe um, num or num1 or something. All right, so num1 here will be equal to maybe 40. All right, so now I can just present this num here and it's going to equally print the value for me. So you see that it also prints 40 for me. All right, so because I did not actually give command for this to be printed, you see that it wasn't touched. So this is um, two ways of representing variables. You can also have another option where we can have um, this, let's say num value. All right, so num value is equal to 90. So here we use this phrase, this phrase with a special character to actually also represent a variable. So these are three different ways to represent a variable. If you're talking about the best way to represent a variable, this will be the best ways. These are the best ways to represent variable. These are the best ways to present variable. I wouldn't recommend that you use this to represent a variable or to create a variable in this way. I recommend that you might you would like to use this as the best way to create variable. It helps to make it more meaningful and also you it makes it unique. So you assign a, a unique variable so that you should use this later on maybe at different section of the code you want to use um, uh, this particular alphabet somewhere else, you might it might conflict with the code. So if you give it a special character, a special description, then it makes it easier for you to differentiate between that and any section of the code that you actually need to represent the variable. All right, so variable can be used to um, store strings, integers, and also other values. So we're going to actually use it. We can also use it to, let's say we can have my name. Okay, so it is my name. My name will be equal to process. So this is, this is a variable that's been used to store a string. So now I can micro print to this variable at any section of the code because it represents this particular screen. So we see that we use a variable to store um, an integer. We can also use it to, inch, to store um, string as well. Okay. The next thing we're going to look about is how to assign multiple values. So just like we know that we, we easily assigned one value to the variable, you can also assign uh, multiple variables to a specific value. So we can say that, let's say for this instance, we can say we can have A, B, C. You can use all of this value to assign this particular variable. Now, what it means is we can have we can have different values in in arrangement aside. So let's say when we come here, we can have strings in here, and this string we're going to have like maybe orange. All 
and you bring here comma introduce another variable like maybe banana and we add and we can bring another variable here as cherry now what we have here is we've used three different variables to present three different values what it's going to do is as soon as we print this the variables and the values are going to arrange according to how they are so let's say here if i come now i'm going to state that print should print a now because i've stated i should print a now let's see what happens when i run this code so you see that it printed orange and it printed faulty because of this all right so it print it took the first value that's assigned orange because this is the first letter let's say that we introduce b here instead it's also going to pick up the next value because it's seen that it takes banana because that's the next value assigned and it will do the same for cherry if we should do that so this is how we can easily represent a variable by using multiple assigning multiple values to multiple variables okay so we can also have um, instance where one value could be assigned uh, one variable or value could be assigned to a lot of variables like you can have different variables like you can have an instance where maybe a will be equal to b and it will be equal to c and this will be assigned to one variable like maybe orange so this is these are all uh, different variables so it means that if we should print this is we can print them equally in different sessions so let me put this one and comment this now if you print this you can see that we printed b it gave me orange if you change it as well to c it's also going to give us orange as such uh, you can see that over here all right so just like you can assign assign them to different values you can also assign all the variables to one particular value that is also another option available in um, using variables in python you can also assign uh, one variable and have different values assigned to it all right so we can have for instance we can let's let's do a simple list we're going to talk more about list so let's introduce it here now so let's say we have fruits and these fruits i put this fruit in this list as maybe mango apple and probably orange okay so now i can actually assign different variables to make reference of this particular so yeah orange was not spelled well so here i can come here and represent here x y z all right so this x y z i'm going to assign it to the name of the list which is fruits fruits okay so now what this um, variable here is now we are using this um list here to is to extract the value from um, you're using this variable to extract the value from this variable this variable is actually fruit and it has these values 
So we, we're saying that you're going to you're using this here to extract this particular value. So now if you come here and we should state maybe print x is going to actually print x for us. How will it print x? It's going to because x is here and x is going to extract the value in fruits. That is the first one. And this is exactly what we have, which is mango. So you see that it prints mango here for us. So these are multiple ways of implementing variables in Python. And we're going to use it. Uh, we're going to see that we're going to apply variables in multiple instances of our development. All right. So that is how cool it is working with um, variables. There's also a variable called global variable. Um, this, is a, this, is a, this is a variable that can be used outside a function. So we would look at functions and as we look more into functions, we can also um, look into how we can use global variable and other variable in that instance. So see you on the next sections of our our series where we talk about functions and a bit of the data types. Thank you and see you on the next session.